Assalamualaikum and good day. My name is Sarah Kistina Binti Morgan and I am a new accountant executive in Padini Holdings Berhad. First and foremost, let's begin with the introduction of the company. Padini Holdings Berhad is a Malaysian-based investment holding company. The company sells both men's and ladies' shoes and accessories, children's garments and accessories through various subsidiaries. It is founded in 1975 by its founder, Yong Pong Chon, who is the Managing Director of Listed Fashion Retailer Padini Holdings Berhad. Its most prominent brands are Padini and Vinci. The first of such outlets was opened in Johor Bahru City Square, Johor Bahru, Malaysia in 1999. The stores are scattered all around the country, boasting store locations in Pavilion Kuala Lumpur and Mid Valley Mega Mall. There are three points in management approach, which are the nature of the business activities, the existence of managers responsible for the activities, and the information presented to the board of directors. Under nature of business activities, it is defined as any activities that is being carried out by an entity with the main objective of gaining profit maximization. Padini main routes are in the manufacturing, trading and supplying of garments to retailers and distributors. Now, we move to the existence of managers responsible for the activities. Each of the operating segments generally has a segment manager who is directly attributable to and maintains the regular contact with the CODM. Padini is a large company, hence each of the segments will be monitored by the managing director and need to be reported to the upper level management. Move forward to the information presented to the board of directors. Information presented to the board of directors contains reliable information regarding the overall performance and financial position of the company. It will help to know about the company performance and decisions will then be made wisely in terms of allocation and profit maximization. I will now explain about the type of segment that has been used by Padini Holdings Perhead. Basically, they use business segment. Business segment were a distinguishable component of an entity that is engaged in providing products or service to their customer. It is subject to risks and returns that are different from those of other business segments. They manufactured ladies' garments and the finished products were wholesale to departmental stores. They also promote and market fashionable apparel, footwear and accessories. Let's get to know who is the chief of decision making and its responsibility in Padini Holdings Perhaps. CODM is the individual or group of individuals that is responsible for the allocation of resources and assessing the performance of the entity's business units. The responsibility of CODM is to assess the performance of operating segments, assess the performance of a wide variety of segments, and regularly review the operating results of both sets of components and financial information. Lastly, the CODM of Padini consists of the Managing Director, Mr. Yong Pang Chun, the Executive Directors, Madam Chong Cheng Lin, Mr. Andrew Yong, Mr. Benjamin Yong, Mrs. Chu Yifan Chin, and Mrs. Sung Fong Fui. Next, let's move on to the question number C. The question requests our group to reproduce a segment report. First and foremost, let's see the process to identify reportable segments and non-reportable segments. Reportable segments are the reporting segments or aggregation of reporting segments that meet specified criteria by using quantitative threshold tests and 10% threshold. Uh, Padini Holding Berhad must submit a separate information about aggregated segments that meet a higher than or equal to 10% test based on first, reported revenue, second, absolute amount of reported profit or loss, or third, the asset of all operating segments. First, let's see the revenue basis. It's total reported revenue from sales to external customer and inter-segments compared with revenue of all operating segments. And then let's see profit or loss basis. The amount of reported profit or loss of the segments of either the combined profits of all operating segments or the combined losses of all the operating segments. And lastly, the asset basis. 
total assets of operating segments compared with the total assets of all, all operating segments of the company. Padini Holding Berhads measure the performance of the reportable segments based on the profit or loss basis. Next, we see the 75% total revenue requirement. At least 75% of the total revenue should, of the entity should be divided by the combined external revenue of the identified reportable operating segment. Pajini Holding Berhads have five operating segments which are investment holding, apparel and footwear, management service, cosmetic and fragrance, and others consist of operations related to cafe and investment property holding. After doing the 10% threshold test, we can see the result of each segment to identify whether they are reportable segments or non-reportable segments. April footwear and cosmetic and fragrance exceed the 10% threshold test, which are 79.38% and 90.43% based on the profit or loss basis. Therefore, these operating segments are identified as reportable segments. Investment holding is identified as reportable segments even if it failed the 10% threshold test because it is only 1.63%. It does not meet the 10% threshold requirement as at 30th June 2020, but a reportable segment in the immediate preceding reporting period, 30th June 2019. Therefore, it should be continued to be treated as reportable segments in the current period of 30th June 2020 because the management considered this information related to this segment as significant. In addition, management service is an operating segment that fall below the 10% threshold requirement, must be considered as reportable segments and, this, and separately disclosed because Padini Holding Berhad believes that information on these segments are useful to the users of financial statements. Other non-reportable segments comprise operation related to cafe and investment property holding Fail the 10% threshold test with only 9.57%. Other operating segments that do not meet the 10% threshold are not classified as reportable segments, are to be combined and disclosed under all other segments category. Next, for the 75% total revenue requirement, external revenue of reportable segments as shown here is divided by the total external revenue and times with 100. So, 1354295 the external revenue from apparel and footwear plus the 5000 of external revenue by cosmetic and fragrance is divided by 1359679 the total external revenue and times it with 100. The answer would be 99.97%. Therefore, by the holding perhaps total external revenue of reportable segments is 99.97%, exceeding the 75% of total external revenue. As a result, no other segment should be reported. The table shown here is the new segmental report from Padini Holdings Perhat for the year ended 30th June 2020. Since they exceed the 75% total revenue requirement, no other segment should be reported by Padini Holdings Perhat. As a result, reportable segments that part that reported by Padini Holdings Berhad are investment holding, apparel and footwear, management service, and cosmetic and fragrance. All other segments consist of cafe and investment holding property. We come to the last question for part E and for the conclusion, the question asks to explain the advantages and disadvantages for segment reporting. As for the advantages of segment reporting, the segmental reporting gives a better understanding of financial statements. Profit making and loss making units can be detected accurately with the use of segmental reporting. Next, segmental reporting helps in the optimum utilization of resources and better presentations. Lastly, segmental reporting also allows financial statements users to get a better sense of fluctuation that might affect the overall number of each segment. And lastly, the advantages of segment reporting. Segment reporting technique for each organization in the segment's transaction are different. Investors and creditors may misinterpret the information provided. Next, segmental reporting requires a great amount of disclosure, making it a time consuming. And lastly, the common costs are sometimes difficult to allocate. Next, I'm going to explain part B. The first question is to explain the basis of preparation of the interim report. The audit Interim financial statement were produced in compliance with MFRS 134 Interim Financial Report 
as well as paragraph 9.22 of Bursa Malaysia Securities Berhad listing requirements. In addition, the content of the interim financial report shall have a balance sheet, an income statement, a statement of change in equity, a cash flow and notes comprising a summary of significant accounting policies and other explanatory notes. I will proceed to the next question, which is to identify any two accounting policies used in preparing the interim report. Same accounting policies should be used in an interim report as it does in an annual financial statement, except where there is a change of accounting policies made up to the date of the most recent annual financial statement. Where there are such changes, it will be reflected in the next financial statements. The first accounting policies used in the preparing the interim report is Property, Plan and Equipment, MFRS 116. Property, Plan and Equipment are tangible items that are held for use in the production of supply or goods or services for rental to others or for administrative purposes and are expected to be used during more than one period. Next, all items of PPE are initially measured at cost. After initial recognition, PPE except for freehold land and capital work in progress are stated at cost less any accumulated depreciation and any accumulated impairment losses. Depreciation is calculated to write off the cost of the assets to their residual values on a straight line basis over their estimated useful lives. The estimated useful life represent common life expectancies applied in the industry within which the group operates. Next. The second accounting policy is Investment Property MFRS 140. Investment property is land or a building including part of a building or both that is held to earn rentals or for capital appreciation or both, not owner occupied, not used in production or supply of goods and services or for administration and not held for sale in the ordinary cost of business. Padini measured its investment property initially at cost, which includes transaction costs. After initial recognition, investment property is measured at a fair value, which reflects market conditions at the end of the reporting period and changes in fair value are included in the profit or loss. Next, I will proceed to the next question, which is to identify the types of interim reports prepared by the company. The first one is Statement of Financial Position. The second one, Statement of Profit or Loss and Other Comprehensive Income. The third one, Statement of Changes in Equity. Next, Statement of Cash Flows. And the last one is Notes to the Financial Statements. For the next questions, identify the period for the current and comparative of each statement prepared by the company. The first one is Statement of Financial Position. The reporting period for the current interim in Statement of Financial Position is only for 3 months, starting from the 1st April of 2020 until the 30th of June 2020. For the comparative end of the year, the reporting period is only for 6 months, which is started by 1st January of 2019 until the 30th of June 2019. Next, for the Statement of Profit or Loss and Other Comprehensive Income. The reporting period for current interim is 3 months which is started by 1st April 2020 until the 30th of June 2020. The reporting period for the cumulative year to date is 6 months which is started by 1st January 2020 until the 30th of June 2020. The reporting period for the comparative current interim is 3 months which is started by 1st April 2019 until the 30th of June 2019. The last one is reporting period for the comparative year to date is 6 months which is started by the 1st January 2019 until the 30th of June 2019. Next, Statement of Changes in Equity and Statement of Cash Flows. Both of the statements has the same reporting period which is for the cumulative year to date is only for 6 months started from 1st January 2020 until the 30th of June 2020. The reporting period for the comparative year to date is 6 months and starting from 1st January 2019 until the 30th of June 2019. Alright, we are moving for the last question. We will have made two adjustments for the third quarter as at 31st March 2020 by using a statement of financial position. The carrying amount of PPE as at 30 June 2020 is 102,992,000 and compared to 2019, it is 132,029,000. And as for the inventories, the cost as at 1st July 2019 and 1 July 2018 are 
267 million and 335,000 and 270 million and 829,000 respectively. Now, let's take a look for the first adjustment which is adjustment for depreciation. On 1 July 2019, Padini Holdings Berhad had PPE costing 363 million and 748,000 with its accumulated depreciation as at 1 July 2019 amounting to 231 million and 719,000. The company depreciates all of its PPE on a straight line basis over the expected useful life of 50 years of the asset. On the 1 October 2019, Padini Holdings Berhad chose to sell one of its building with a carrying amount of 500 million for a profit of 125 million. The building was initially purchased by the company at a cost of 65 million. In addition, on the 1st January 2020, the company acquired a new building at a cost of 50 million. Financial accounting year end for Padini Holdings Berhad is 30th June 2020. Okay, so after doing all the calculation, the current amount as at 1st January 2019 is 181 million, 80,990. For the second adjustment, it is regarding inventories. On the 1st July 2019, the company had inventories at a cost of 267 million and 339,000. The price of inventories change every year. At the 1 October 2019, the net reserve value of inventories is 260 million and 808,000. On the 1st October 2019, the value of inventories shall be recognized at the lower of NRV and cost. The value of inventories shall be written down to its NRV, which is 200, 260 million and 777,000 in the second quarter of the statement of financial position. The loss of inventories amounting to 6,531,000 6, shall be recognized as an expense in the statement of profit or loss and other compressive income. On the 1st January 2020, the net reserve value changed to 273 million and 870,000. Therefore, the value of the inventories shall be recognized by using the cost of amounting to 267 million and 339,000. So, Padini Holdings Berhad should be reverse the 6,531,000 inventory loss that was previously recognized in the statement of profit and loss. Lastly, we shall look at the after adjustment. Here is the third quarter of statement financial position. The company prepares two types which are carry interim and comparative. The carrying amount of property plant equipment as at 31st March 2020 is now 181 million 80,990 and compared to 30th June 2019, it is 132 million and 29,000. For the inventories, the value is 20, 267 million and 339,000 and compared to 30th June 2019, it is 270 million and 831,000. Alright, that's all from us. Thank you for watching.